After the last movie, we finally see the big guys Justice League. Superman, Batman and The Flash are all in this movie. We got a small taste of how this Justice League feels and how Batman once again broke a woman's heart. Batman be Batman, huh? Always playing with a woman's heart. He just can't help it. The story is another retell of Supergirl origin. Supergirl, after arriving on Earth, has not been able to fit in, and some of the heroes, Batman, sees her uncontrollable power as a threat. We have to take it as an absolute certainty. Having no control over her powers is more than a loose end. With her abilities, that makes her a threat. Seeing his cousin struggle, Superman suggests she trains with the Legion of Superheroes in the 31st century and see if she is able to fit in. During her stay in the 31st century, an evil plot that has been set up since the 21st century by a criminal mastermind slowly unveils and it is up to Supergirl and the recruits to stop the world from ending once and for all. The movie continues the same style of animation from the previous movies in the same universe. I think the animation style is fine, not bad, I don't have a problem with it. It's different from other DC original animated movie, but I don't love it either. It does give me the feel of looking clean and modern, but very detailed at the same time. And the color is very bright. Everything is very clear to me, but I still don't like the part where every time an action plays out, there will be a slight pause before the character continues with the next action. I have been noticing this ever since the first movie, Superman Man of Tomorrow, but I think this movie has slightly reduced the duration of those pauses. They aren't that long like in other movies. Maybe they will slowly take out these pauses, but it will kind of make it lose the style of its animation. So Batman, Superman and Flash have all finally been in the same movie this time. I think they work fine together for the few minutes of screen time being together. The movie is not about them, so they are pretty much there just to set up the movie for Supergirl. Then bye bye. They are not heard or seen again, which is an issue I have with the film. In the 21st century, the Justice League correction, Batman is a tool to set up the final straw that leads to Supergirl giving up staying on Earth. You just can't control yourself, huh Bruce? Always making women miserable. But before Supergirl leaves, we see Batman already detecting something is wrong and successfully proven his hunch. But this storyline is to further suspend the audience that something is going to go down in the 31st century, nothing more. And after the crisis has been eliminated in the 31st century, we never see Supergirl and the other heroes do anything to stop the brewing of this crisis in the last century, despite Supergirl's knowledge of it. We also never go back to Batman and the Justice League dealing with this situation. I know this is Legion's movie, but I don't think the Justice League should be involved with the plot in the first place if they are not going to end their part of the story. I know it can be explained with butterfly effects and all the other bullshit, but those theories are not established in this universe yet. Even if they are, how can Superman or the Legion of Superheroes recklessly make contact through time? So the ending and the double storyline did not do it for me. It's not even a double storyline, more like one and a half, because the 21st century storyline ended after it began. So if you know the lore of Supergirl, the majority of the movie will be very predictable for you. If you don't know much about the lore, then you might have a chance to find the movie entertaining in terms of story development and the mystery, especially guessing which character is secretly evil. But I did not see the reveal coming regarding the main villain. Maybe I'm stupid. STUPID! I know I am. Dead man villain reveal is pretty surprising to me. 
It further challenges the protagonist on a psychological level, which is necessary for the climax and the protagonist's growth. Plus, the design of the villain is something I haven't seen before in other DC content, which is pretty cool. Spoiler alert for this section, if you haven't watched the movie and don't want to be spoiled, I will be talking about the main villain of the movie, so use the timestamp to enter the next section. If you don't care about spoilers, then let's continue. First, the right hand man of the main villain, mon L. I don't like him at all. Due to me having the knowledge that Brainiac 5 is a good guy and he will end up with Supergirl, the idea of having mon L as the potential love interest to cover up his true identity is kinda not really working and ruins the reveal of him being evil. Plus, his motivation to be bad is logical but weak in my opinion. He only speaks on doing it because he thinks others are inferior and that's why he idolizes Kryptonian. But the movie never shows me how he came to this idea that is so drastic that he secretly joins a cult helping them to infiltrate the Legion. He has never seen Krypton, never been to Krypton. It is impossible as Krypton was destroyed a century ago. And his idolization of Kryptonian was only shown once where he met Supergirl and he speaks of how much he idolizes Kryptonian. We did not see him showing some Kryptonian museum or researching Kryptonian technology or biology. And the fact that he is basically being Mr. Perfect, it is so obvious that this guy is hiding something. And he magically appears when they infiltrate the vault basically seals the deal. No more mystery. The guy is the bad guy. So the main villain, that's a twist I didn't see coming. Brainiac returns after being killed by the Flash in the other movie, Justice League Society World War II. And he grossed me out in this movie. His body is built from combining his clones where all of them are still alive. They are literally hats on his body that can speak. And the ending where all the clones rebel against Brainiac and burst out of his body, blood is spilling everywhere. Brainiac's body is also covered in blood. The imagery is disturbing to me. And he also killed himself by literally tearing himself in half. They only show the shadow of it, but the thought of it is still very haunting. I like that. Brainiac 5 is the embodiment of prejudice in the movie. The people around him don't trust him because he is a Brainiac. This is great. But this quickly turns into nothing more than an obstacle to be overcome between him and Supergirl. Those heroes being put in charge of supervising the recruits initially showed extreme prejudice towards the kid. They even locked him up when something happened without even investigating or give him a trial. But again, the ending failed me. After defeating Brainiac, we never saw anyone apologize or any consequences happen to those who doubt Brainiac 5. They didn't apologize or acknowledge their mistakes. Heck, they are not even appearing again. This makes the theme pointless to me. The movie is animated beautifully. It has some themes that can be great but I don't think they use the potential of those themes very well. And the ending doesn't do it for me. We have seen this type of story many times before, where a group of newbies have to work together to defeat an evil force that invaded the school. You know how the old crime comedy, whenever the main character finished fighting, then all the cops arrive and the movie ends with the main character having a kiss? That's literally how this movie ends. In 2023, that is not gonna fly with me. So, if you love DC animated projects, you can check this one out. Just for the future movies in the same universe, a Justice League movie is coming up soon. If you are not a diehard fan, then you can skip this one. With that ending, I don't really see Supergirl having another major role in the future films within the universe. Maybe just a cameo in a crossover sometime down the line. With James Gunn taking over the DCU, he seems to be happy keeping Sasha Kaye as Supergirl. I'm fine with that, she looks exactly like Lara Lane Ken. But there is news that Sasha is actually playing Kara. I mean, really? She even has Lara's suit. Come on. 
It just shows that they have no confidence in Supergirl, not willing to explore new Supergirl, just keep Kara as the name to please the general audience. But if Sasha is playing Lara, then great, we can have another Supergirl, Kara, in the new DCU. I personally want to see Samara Weaving play the character. There are someone out there that can be a better fit, but for now, she is my pick. So, have you watched the movie? Do you like it? How are you feeling about the new tomorrow verse? Comment down below and let me know. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.